Okay, so section 10.4, last section 10.3, I know it's been a little while, but was chords inside of the circle like segments. So we're kind of continuing that instead of segments, we're doing angles. So what they're called is inscribed angles and polygons. So inscribed, scribed would mean drawn or written in, obviously would be inside. So the one theorem that we talk about, this is kind of a big one in terms of its usefulness. Um, so an inscribed angle would have nothing to do with the center. The center would call, is called a central angle, and we talked about that. The central angle, the angle is equal um, to the arc, like measure. So if the angle in the center was 60, then the arc would be 60. Um, so for this one, the angle is half the arc. Or the angle measure is half the arc measure. So we're talking about degrees. Okay, so if AC was a hundred oops degrees then the arc would be 50 degrees. And you can obviously go back and forth. But the angle is half, so if you know the angle, then you're going the opposite direction, times two. If you know the arc, the angle is half. Okay, that comes up, <coughs> excuse me, in quite a few you know, different pictures. So anytime you see like the angle on the edge of the circle, the first thing that you want that you would want to think of is, hey, that angle, the arc is half, um, or the angle is half of whatever the arc is, or the arc is times two. Um, you may end up having to do some other stuff, but that is kind of a big um, component. Okay, um, so like one of the pictures. This is a good one because it kind of incorporates a few things. Oops. Okay, so this kind of incorporates like both like things. So if you know the angle, um, or the angle is half the arc, so to go here, we want to do half of 52. Um, so half of 50 is 25, so 52, that would be 26 degrees. If you know the angle, the angle is half the arc, so it gets like you're going the opposite direction. So you would do times two. and the arc would be 90 degrees. Okay, so that kind of goes like back and forth. Um, I'm gonna write it down, but this is one that you can get away with not remembering, and I'll explain why in just a second. Um, but kind of has this weird Drawing, it's not weird, I suppose, but so the theorem says um, if two angles of a circle they call it intercept the same arc. So, what does that mean? Intercept. So, if I took a and this angle a 
and drew like that angle, it goes to D and C. And if I took angle B, it also goes to D and C. So what arc does angle A intercept DC? What arc does B intercept DC? Okay, so it's kind of a thing like that. So if this was 50 degrees, then angle A, the angle is half the arc, 25 degrees would go there, but 25 degrees would also go for B because they go to the same arc. So the theorem basically says if two angles intercept the same arc, then those angles are congruent. Um, so if you, here's, you know, this theorem, like I said, you can kind of ignore because if you used theorem 10.10, the angles half the arc, well, you're going to know that those two are the same, like anyway. Where it can be, that's where we, where you're allowed to do that or able to do that is if you know the number. Oh, it's 50 degrees. Um, if you didn't know the number and they wanted you to know what's congruent, then this theorem comes into play a bit more where you'll need to like say, well, A and B are congruent because they intercept the same arc. D and C would also be congruent. If you look at D, and you draw the lines away, they go to A and B, and C go to A and B also. Um, they could be different numbers, it just depends on the, the drawing and stuff like that. So you can kind of get away with this one if you know the numbers. If you don't know the numbers, then it can be a little bit more challenging. Um, So it could be a thing where, um, let me erase some stuff here. If you knew one of these angles, so I'm gonna change the number just to illustrate a point. Um, so if this was say 20 degrees, then DC, if you're going from the angle to the arc, it's times two, like this 45 to the 90. So then this would be 40 degrees, and then you could come back to angle B and say, well, that's half the arc is 20. So if you knew one of them, you kind of get the other two. Again, it doesn't mean that AB is also 40 and D and C are 20. That's not necessarily the case. It's possible, but it's also possible for them to be different. So you can't make like that jump. All right. Um, the angles half the arc. So the angles are, this one, I mean, the angles are congruent because they go to the same arc, but it's half the arc. This theorem where angles half the arc. Be incorporating the angles half the arc theorem, theorem 10.10, .10, with, so two more theorems. Um, theorem 10.12. So it says if we have a right triangle. You know, I don't like that picture. Okay, so um, the theorem says if a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, that's what I have here, then the hypotenuse is a diameter of the circle. So if I have a right triangle, then that's a diameter. And then it says conversely, if one side of an inscribed triangle is a diameter of the circle, 
then the triangle is a right triangle and the angle opposite that is a right angle. A lot of words to basically say this. If you have a right triangle, then the hypotenuse is a diameter. If you have a triangle and one of the sides is a diameter, you have a right triangle. You get to go back and forth. Okay? So <clears throat> it's not in the theorem, but it's worth... I suppose there's two different ways you could look at this. Like if you have a diameter, then you know that's 180 degrees because it's a semicircle. We talked about that in the first section. Um, if that's 180 degrees, it's talking about like from this red dot to this red dot or like from A to B. Um, and that angle goes back to this angle C and the angle is half the arc. 180, half of 180, 90 degrees. Okay, so if you have a right triangle, you have a diameter. If you have a diameter, you have a right triangle. Okay. All right, and then theorem 10.13. So here we are, adding all this information. Um, so if we have a quadrilateral, so this one... has to be four sides. This, this information only works with a quadrilateral. Um, opposite angles supplementary. So here's, you know, we're starting to add some information and in the sections one, two, and three, everything was like, this is congruent to this, this is congruent to this, this is congruent to this. Where now, now we add, like, well, if it's a right triangle, then it's diameter. So more like the other ones, but now we have supplementary. They add up to 180. So this is where, again, the chapter is getting increasingly, like, difficult. And knowing that, or being able to use the fact that angle A and angle C add up to 180, or angle B and angle D add up to 180, that's not hard. The hard part is remembering <laughs> all the stuff. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, and this goes back and forth. Um, I don't know why you'd want to necessarily go back and forth, but um, it basically says, like, well, if this poly or quadrilateral is inscribed, then opposite angles are uh, supplementary. And then it says... Like, it says if and only if. So that means, well, if the opposite angles are supplementary, then it's inscribed in a circle. But it's kind of obvious when it's inscribed. So you don't necessarily have to worry like, too much about that. Okay. <laughs> um, but these problems, um, you know, are going to be hopefully, like, somewhat simple. So if that's 100 degrees, um, then... Angle B is 80 degrees because they have that up to 180. So, you know, if angle A was 95 degrees, then angle C um, is like 85 degrees, which that doesn't make sense. Oh, that should be 85 where the 95 is. Duh. If that is 85 degrees, then C is 95 degrees, which makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so that's, I mean, literally a couple of the examples and problems are that, like, straightforward. Okay. Um... So again, like the key on these two, like number one, if you see the center with a triangle, then angle C is 90 degrees. Therefore, the arc on the other side is 180. Um, so you're going to be able to like deal with some of these questions are going to deal with arcs. 
Okay, so also remember like on, okay, these things are supplementary, but if you, I'm gonna draw this a little bit bigger, try to draw something similar in size, but, so if you had angle A, B, C, D, um, we kind of need to look at, so if you look at angle A, it goes to D and B. So if you knew that angle A, like on this last one, is 85 degrees, you could figure out the arc from B all the way to D. You wouldn't know how far BC or DC or DC is, but you would know the whole thing you know, is whatever. So if it was like 85, remember if you know the angle, you do times 2, from B to D would be 170. But remember that angle C goes out to the same two letters, but that arc goes like the long like way around from D to A to B. Um, you know, angle B, if you extend it out, goes to A and C, and angle D does also. It's just different ways around. So just because they go to the same spot on the circle does not make those arcs equal. So if I do, to just use some nice like easy numbers, if I knew that this is 100, then this is 80. And it might not be perfectly like drawn, but um, because it's inscribed, so they add up to 180. Well, in this drawing then, arc AC, or A, remember I need to do, if it's, uh, shoot, um, it's not letting me erase. All right, fine, go away then, sorry. Um, so if I'm looking at angle, from angle D, arc A, B, C, A, B, C, so D goes to A and D goes to C. Well, angle D is 100, so that arc has to be 200 degrees. And then if I looked at arc, starting with B, if I go from A to D to C, Goodness gracious. A D C. So A D C this way, well angle B is 80. So the angle or the arc is two times. So the angle's half. So I went from A to C, but if I go through point D, it's 160 degrees. But I if I go from A to B to C, still starting and stopping, it's just going a little bit longer the way then it's 200 degrees. So using these like polygons or quadrilaterals specifically because we know that the opposite angles are supplementary, they're gonna ask you questions about arcs. So, oh, these are supplementary, but then you're gonna to need to be able to extend those lines out um, to the different parts of the circle to check like on what the angles or the arcs are. Okay, so that can be visually part of a challenge. Okay, so and just remember that they all add up to 360. So if we've kind of created four arcs, AD, DC, BC, and AB, like there's four different smaller sections. I can combine two or more together to make other ones, but those four, like they, they all of them need to add up to 360. So if you look at from ADC is 160, and then CBA, just the backwards of this arc, is 200. And well, that adds up to 360. Okay. So again, like a lot of the problems, um, it's just numbers. And then the last four, I believe, um, I think you're just doing through 16. Serves me correct. Let me double check. Yes, you're just doing up to three through sixteen. The last four will incorporate some letters, but a couple of them are actually really simple. And then the last two are probably the harder ones, but they're not like super crazy weird. But okay, so 
<coughs> keep reviewing your theorems. That's going to be a big thing. Okay. All right. Have a great rest of your Monday and we'll see you tomorrow.